uh, one of the speakers that I really look forward to hear. It will not be the first time because he's been a teacher of mine at the MBS of A. It's Harley Love Grove, right, present right here. He's a specialist in anything that has to do with project management, change management, and interim management. He's a CEO, CEO, C, everything with a C and a O that you can imagine. And um, he has created companies since he was 21. That was when he first started building companies. He's from the UK, he lives in Belgium now, but he works most of the week in Germany. Uh, he works for big clients like uh, Bayern and uh, Levi's and Dexia, the, uh, and all these companies of the like, and uh, they just bring him, in, bring him in to do the stuff that they are not able to do, you know, and uh, he delivers. Um, he's excellent in anything that has to do with project management, so if you have any questions you should ask him, and also uh, on what he's going to talk about today. Leadership. He's a great leader and he's going to help you be it yourself. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm going to start off by asking just a couple of questions, if I may. You just have to put your hands in the air. Okay. How many of you. Wow. <laughs> how many of you are. Yeah, okay. I could just play on that one. How many of you have a partner, boyfriend, girlfriend, or whatever, who's not here this morning and is somewhere else? <laughs> what the hell are you guys doing here on a Saturday? <laughs> what is it about you that makes you want to come here? How many of you have got children? <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Why on earth would you give up your free time to come here on a Saturday? I hope I'm going to have the answer to that question. It's because you've got a vision. You've got a vision of the world, a vision of your life, a vision of something that you have not yet achieved and you want to achieve it, you're about to achieve it, you're on your journey. But that vision, my friends, if it's only in your head, then you shouldn't be here. You have got to be able to get your vision into one sentence. You have got to be able to share that vision. Because here today I'm going to talk to you about inspirational leadership. And you think, inspirational leadership, that's nothing for me. I'm an entrepreneur, I'm just starting out. What on earth could that be about? Leaders are born leaders, not by birth. They become leaders. And why do they become leaders? Because they have a vision. And when you have a vision, you share that vision. And what happens when you have a vision and you share that vision? You have followers. People who hear that vision and say, hey, that's cool, I really like that. In the beginning, it's your family, the fools around you, the friends, the bankers, the investors, anyone you're talking to, you're sharing that vision with. And if you share it well, if you make it clear, if they understand that vision, they will follow you. They will try and help you. They will support you. Raymond invited me here today to give a talk. He, he, when he said to me, it's 9.30 on a Saturday morning, it's 15 minutes, I said, get out of here. There's no fee, for God's sake. I never work without a big fee. But this guy somehow showed me the vision of his life, where he was going, and for one moment, for 15 minutes, I can help him. And that's why I'm here. Okay? Now, this vision, you've got to be able to make it clear. A lot of people, a lot of young entrepreneurs and people come up to me because they know I have some cash, they know I have connections, and they start to talk to me about their businesses. And after five or ten minutes, I still don't get it. And if I don't get it, it means you haven't got a vision. Because a vision is only something if other people can see it. And if you can't make them see it clearly, they're going to not follow you anymore. If you make it clear, you have a follower. If you have a follower, you're a leader. But I'm not talking about ordinary leaders today. I'm talking about inspirational leaders. And you guys are going to need that more than anyone else. An inspirational leader has five basic elements. Five elements. First of all, they have confidence. Confidence. What is confidence? Confidence is that foundation element that makes you say to yourself and makes you believe that everything you do is possible. Everything is thinkable is possible. If I can think up this vision, it's possible. That is the foundation element of everything. Don't worry about your confidence being too low. That isn't a problem. 
You'll go home, you'll have a whiskey, you wake up the next day, maybe take the dog for a walk, you have another idea, and your confidence will come back. For most people, it will come back, certainly for entrepreneurs. Confidence is a problem when you have too much of it. When you have success, when you make your first million, and you think, that's brilliant, I've done it, I've got my first million, wow! You sell your first company, you've got all that cash in the bank, that is when you're going to have your biggest problem in life. Because everybody will think that you'll think that everything that you have has turned to gold, everything you do is brilliant. And what you'll see is, very shortly, you'll lose your way, your vision is really gone, and you've wasted that money, and it will be very hard to get back. Don't ever think that that confidence thing, that money, is going to be the easy bit. Confidence is really, really important. It's something that is half maybe nurture and nature. It's something around you. But as inspirational leaders, they have this confidence, and it's that confidence that they ooze out to others, that inspires others. Because not only has this guy got a vision, they also believe that that vision will work because of the confidence of that person. And if you believe that that vision is realisable, you will follow, you will believe, you will invest, you will listen, you will carry on, you will move. But confidence is important for one other thing to do with inspirational leadership and entrepreneurship. If you're confident, you believe you can do anything. You believe you can write that Excel sheet, you can finish the business plan. But if you're confident, you are able to trust others because you're able to step in and solve the problem if they get it wrong. So actually, confidence allows us to delegate. If you trust people, it's because you're confident that you can put whatever, if it did go wrong, right. But you also believe it won't go wrong. So confidence gives us that foundation element to allow us to trust other people, to allow us to delegate. And if you don't delegate, your businesses are not going to go anywhere. Because there are no successful businesses in life with just one person. So if it's more than one person, there's a leader. So who are we leading right now? Ask yourself, is it your family? You're having to inspire your partners to say, I'm not going to be with you and I'm not going to be with the kids this morning because I'm going to a course on entrepreneurship. Oh, not that again. <laughs> you and your bloody entrepreneurship. Don't talk about entrepreneurship, talk about the vision. If they believe in your vision, they'll support you. They will encourage you. They will say, how did it go? What did you learn? What did you gain? Who did you meet? If you don't get asked those questions this evening when you get back, ask yourself, why am I here? Because it's obviously not clear in the people that love you and are close to you why you're here, what your vision is. And if it's not clear to them, they're not going to support you through the difficult times. Because there will be difficult times. There will be times when you're thinking about mortgaging your house to raise some cash to pump into your business. And if they're not 150% behind you, they're not going to follow you. Okay? So there's your close loved ones, there's your friends, there's your college students, there's all the people around you who have supported you and will support you. Those are the people who are your followers right now, but that will grow and grow and grow and grow. Right, so confidence is that thing they want to see matched to the vision. The next one is emotional intelligence. Now, emotional intelligence is not about being a nice person. Oh, he's a nice person. She's lovely. That doesn't mean she's got emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is about being able to manipulate people. Wow, what is this guy talking about? Manipulation, if you look in the dictionary, is not a negative thing. It's not a bad thing. You go into a room and there's some people doing nothing, just sitting around doing nothing. You've got some books in your car and you want them to get into this building. I have somehow got to inspire, encourage those people to stop doing what they were doing and to do something which ordinarily they wouldn't want to do. How do I do that? I use emotional intelligence. That's how I do it. That is the skill to get other people to do things which they ordinarily wouldn't do. What is the role of a leader? The role of a leader is to take you somewhere other than that you are heading. If everyone is heading in the right way all of the time, you don't need a leader, do you? If the country could just run itself, we wouldn't need politicians. 
Okay, maybe that's not. <laughs> okay, so emotional intelligence is a, one of those elements which is absolutely vital. It's Ramon's emotional intelligence, the way he engages with me, the way he looks at me, that says, okay, come on, I want you to do this. Do this for me. Do it for you. It's good for everyone. You end up believing it. His vision, confidence, and emotional intelligence gets me out of my bed on a Saturday morning, which is a really difficult thing to do. Adaptability is our next element. I guess, or I hope, that all of you have a plan. Because on the one hand, you have your vision. Then you need a strategy to obtain that vision. But the one thing I am absolutely sure of is that your strategy will need to change. Because the world we live in is constantly changing. We meet other people, we engage with other people, we have a new idea. And that means we have to change our strategy. Let's keep, take it simple. Imagine you want to get to America. And imagine you can't afford the flight. Well, you go by boat. You get a job working on a boat, doing the washing up or whatever, and you get there by boat. You're adjusting your strategy to obtain your vision. And this is what we have to do in life. And most businesses fail, most of you guys will fail, if you don't realize that even the best plans need to be adjusted and constantly adapted and matched against what is my reality and what is my plan. If you forcibly go with your strategy, bonk, 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 you will fail. You focus on your vision and adapt your strategy to suit. Adaptability is also linked with emotional intelligence because you have to adapt to your investors, you have to adapt to your customers, you have to adapt to your suppliers, you have to adapt to everyone. If the goods that you need, if the people are not available when you need, you will have to adapt to your planning and strategy, but focused on delivering the final vision. One of the things that always amazes me is that most entrepreneurs believe that they can do it on their own. And the one thing they don't want to give away is their shares. Because it's my business, it's my secret. Most of the time they don't even want to tell you what it is they're up to. And there are probably two people in this room who have completely different business plans, but if they met each other and really listened to each other, because emotional intelligence is all about listening, they might think, if we just linked together and adapted our strategies, we could double our strength and combine our two businesses together to form one bigger vision, one new vision, one part of that vision. There are very, very few businesses that are successful with only one person. So you need to adapt your strategy to get your vision. Everyone you meet, everything you do, you have to say to yourself, how does this moment in time bring me nearer to my vision? And what do I need to adapt to obtain my vision? Adaptability is extremely important and most businesses fail because most entrepreneurs have this inner belief, thank goodness, that everything is possible, I can do this, but I can't do this. We can do this, but who is the we? We haven't even got the we yet, we haven't started employing, thank goodness. So at this point, it's just I, but very quickly, you've got to think, me and my followers, we can do this. Who do I need on board? Who do I need working with me? Okay? So adapting all the time and realizing it's never going to be you that's going to make millions. It will be the people you're working with and your suppliers and your customers that will together make that money. Okay? Now we're on to pragmatism. Absolutely very, very important. There comes a time when all the business plans are finished your strategy is written, but you actually have to do something. <coughs> Pragmatic. Pragmatism is actually a philosophy. It's a philosophy. If you look in the dictionary, you'll see it's actually a philosophy. You think, how weird, how can you have pragmatism as a philosophy? It was founded, it was invented. It's a word that's actually invented. But pragmatism <coughs> is about really making things happen. But in fact, it's about making something real. And the philosophy is that something is only real, it's only true, if it can be proven. So your vision is only true if you can prove it. 
but your vision is still quite a long way off. Okay? So right now, the pragmatism is about getting something done today that will get you one step nearer to your vision. And my mother was a very, very pragmatic woman. She still is. She's uh, 82 years old. She lives on her own in a house in England. She has a big garden. And one summer, it was a very hot summer, and I was... a uh, I hate gardening and I hate cutting the grass and I was trying to get an excuse not to, to cut the, the grass and I sat in my office and I thought, right, I need to write an email to my mother and I wrote her an email and what happened? I wrote an email saying, oh, I'm bloody nuisance, my, my lawnmower's broken down and, the, and uh, the guys want three weeks to fix it and la 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 la. I get four line answer. Can't you borrow one from a friend or someone in the family? Right? And then she says, I always hand mine in in December. I get a 10% discount and there's no waiting time. And then she has all these in the four lines. She comes up with seven laws of management. She's such a pragmatic person. She even gets someone else to take the lawnmower in. And she talks about how she has two lawnmowers, a big one and a small one. And she puts the, the, the other person uses the big one and she uses the small one. It's unbelievable. If you are pragmatic, you can be so efficient and effective, and that's what it's about. So you need to have pragmatic skills. You need to be around those people. And if you feel you're lacking in any one of these elements, then make sure very quickly you surround yourself with people who can compensate for the ones that you're missing. Because if you don't, you will fail. Simple as that. Okay, last one. Intellectual curiosity. What on earth is intellectual curiosity? Intellectual curiosity, I'm quite confident that nearly all of you have. Intellectual curiosity is all about being interested in absolutely everything. How does this work? How does that work? Well, this is interesting. Who makes this? What's in this product? How does it work? What does that happen? Now, most of you probably have this. But why is it absolutely essential? It's essential because if you want to inspire people to work for you and do things for you, you've got to be an interesting person. If you're a boring person, and you only talk about your vision all the time, people will very quickly stop coming to talk to you and meet you. Oh my God, not again Ramon and his bloody thing. <laughs> That's so important that you have to be an interesting person. But how do we become interesting? We become interesting by broadening our horizons, by experiencing new things, and these things link together. Going to the opera, going to the theatre, reading a book, not about business, but about something completely different. Meeting new people and asking them questions that encourage them to talk about themselves so that you're listening to them. This makes you interesting because the next people you meet, you say, hey, I met this crazy guy on the weekend who's got this theory about cooking a meal in his dishwasher. <laughs> what is that? And you start talking about it and you engage. And this network, this is the story I got again from Ramon this morning, this network will start spreading. If I put it in my newsletter next week, maybe a thousand people will read it. Who is this Ramon guy? Click and back to his network. That only happens if you have something interesting to say. If you have a story that can be told in 30 seconds or in three hours. Interesting stories, interesting events, being an interesting person interested in other things, using your intellectual curiosity will help you enormously in your business. So to sum up, you need to be a leader, an inspirational leader. You need to inspire other people to do great things for you to help you realize your vision. And how are you going to do that? You're going to be monitoring your confidence level. Not becoming so arrogant and overconfident that everybody thinks, oh, he doesn't need my help. He or she can do it all on their own. Of course you need their help. You can never do it on your own. Emotional intelligence. The ability to steer and guide people to tell people off, to get people to do things that they wouldn't normally do. Day in, day out, year in, year out. Adaptability. Realizing that your vision will only be achieved by adapting your strategy to ensure that it happens. And most important in adaptability, to make sure that you have a strategy in place for every circumstance. Times will change. 
How do you make God laugh? You tell him your plans. <laughs> Pragmatism. You need to be pragmatic. Someone's got to do the washing up. Someone's got to clean the bathroom before the visitors come for that important meeting. Someone has to take the minutes. Be pragmatic. Put the right tools in the hands of the right people and make sure you are being efficient. Intellectual curiosity. Make sure that you've got a books on your reading list and you're actually reading them, which are not always directly related to the things that you're currently doing. Make sure you're listening when you meet people instead of talking. Learn and share stories. Ladies and gentlemen, if you do all of these things, of course you have to know about how to run a business. You have to know about balance sheets. You have to know about the five things you need to monitor, the cash, the clients, all those things. That's basic, that's given. You, that you can learn in, in, in any management school, or in reading books, or just by making mistakes. Going out in life and making mistakes, you'll learn. But you really need these things, and you need to culture these things, and you need to nurture them, because you've got to inspire all the people around you to be with you on your journey to obtain your vision. I hope you've enjoyed my little talk, and I hope I didn't overrun. Ladies and gentlemen, inspirational leadership. Thank you very much. Indeed. I'm just going to say that if you're interested, I have a website, of course, harleylovegroup.com, and I have a weekly newsletter, and some people find that very interesting, because I talk about <coughs> a little topic of these every single week, a little, little newsletter, and you can comment and, and come back. People all over the, road, the world read it, and you might find that interesting, harleylovegroup.com. Okay. And outside, if you're interested, there are some books and stuff, but I'll leave that all to yes. you. Thank you very um, much. If you're interested in following uh, Harley Lovegrove's books, there's one on inspiration and leadership that he just published. There's another one on project management. And if you like them, you just take them. And there's a trust box where we trust you to leave the money for the books that you've taken. Um, another thing, you still have time to ask a couple of questions to Harley, and he's leaving for a meeting this morning. So, any questions? The one yeah. there, in the back. What about when you begin a startup and you have many leaders together? How do you get them to work together? Whoa, that's a good question. Many, many leaders. That's great. How do you do it? You use pragmatism. First of all, you analyze the skills of each one of those leaders. What have they got which is unique that the other ones don't have? Because at the beginning, it's not about what you want to do, it's about what you're good at, because at the beginning is what you need, you need to be efficient, you need to be doing what you're really good at. If one of you is good at the finances and the Excel, or is better than the others, they have to do it. You need a list of tasks that need to be done. You need a plan. Okay, this is my vision of the future, this is my strategy, how I'm going to get there. The business plan is one thing, but you need to break it down to a set of tasks and milestones and goals. And then you need to say, okay, which of these leaders is going to be responsible for which of these goals? And you break it up into a set of goals, because everything is going to be, what, five goals, something like that, six main goals, so one for each of the leaders. But get them busy focusing on their goal. You meet and you talk about how they're doing achieving their goal, how you're doing achieving your goal. When it's not working, you switch over. Hey, Jack, you try doing this goal, and I'll switch over to you. So you, you turn them to stop discussing about leaders by giving them useful things to do and then measuring those things. Because whilst you're just discussing, 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 you're going nowhere. Okay? Yeah? Any more questions? If you think of a question, go to the newsletter or to the, or to the blog and make a comment on what you see and probably you'll get an answer. Can't guarantee always, because you get... I have a question. Yeah. How do you decide, you said, you need people, you, uh, you have to have the time, if something is getting you closer to your vision. How do you decide if uh, a conversation you're having, a person you're meeting, a terrible idea is getting you closer to your vision or not? How do you decide or how do you know? Well, how do you know? How do you know? You don't always know, actually. And the funny thing is, it's the next morning, when you wake up the next morning, and you're driving to work, and you're thinking about something completely different, and something comes back from that conversation. You think, oh, yeah, that, that, oh, that's interesting. It maybe just sparks something in your mind. 
don't always analyze, as you're listening, how this is getting me closer to my vision. How does, you know, I mean, that, that's a bit sad. But on the other hand, by listening, it goes into your brain. The brain is an amazing thing. As long as there's oxygen in the room, and as long as you're eating well, and you, you know, that you've, got, you've got drinking water and stuff like that, that information is there. Huh? As long as you didn't do all the talking, it's there. And it will come back when you need it. You have to trust that. And if you end up by having a good relationship with the thing, you can always phone them back and say, what did you really mean about this? That was an interesting thing that you said, and I, you know, I, I'd like to know more about that. And everyone likes talking about their own thoughts when someone says that. Huh? Everyone likes that. Okay? Yeah? You can also reach Harley on Twitter. It's at Harley Love Grow. Okay? Okay. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Back to work, everyone. That's about it for now. We have another presentation at 11.30.